Hey guys, it's Sarah at carnivore.yogi on Instagram. Thank you so much for coming on to my YouTube channel. Please do hit the subscribe button while you're here and make sure to like this video. So today, this is my weekly update. I'm gonna be talking about my continuous glucose monitor that I have here on my arm, why I decided to put it on, how it felt. I'm gonna talk about the effects of the carnivore diet on my monitor. So basically just eating meat and drinking black coffee this week, what that looked like, the effects of stress on the glucose monitor, the effects of cold therapy, as well as exercise. I will also tell you how many inches I lost this week, and as a little side note, I tracked everything. I didn't track my macros, but I tracked every little bite of food that went into my mouth and everything that I drank. So <laughs> the number of inches that I lost is probably because I was being a bit more mindful of what I was eating. So first of all, why do, did I wanna put a continuous glucose monitor on my arm? So I've been carnivore for almost a year now, so mostly eating from, well, actually only eating from the animal kingdom, and I wanted to see how that looked on my blood glucose. I have a history of hypoglycemia where I would get nervous and shaky and irritable, like real irritable, hangry was like my term after just like a couple of hours or I couldn't go longer than three hours without eating. This is before I did the carnivore diet. So blood sugar issues there. I also have a history of PCOS. Um, so some insulin resistance. I had a bunch of cysts all over my ovaries before I started the carnivore diet last year at this time. And now those are gone, which is really cool but I wanted to just kind of check in with those numbers. I have used a Keto Mojo throughout this year just to kind of tap in, check into my blood sugar numbers, but I wanted to kind of get the real deal. So I have been wearing this monitor for one week and one day and applying it was extremely easy. It was kind of more of like a mental thing than anything. I watched some different YouTube videos and basically said, all right, I'm gonna do this. Um, I put on some gloves, I washed my hands, put on some gloves. I did an alcohol swab back here behind my arm and basically just popped it on. It felt like a little teeny sting, if that. I mean, it's it was totally painless to put on. Then I put a bandage on top of it. The bandage is holding up really well. I've been showering and working out, exercising, all of those things that's been holding up really well. I really don't even notice it's there 99% of the time. So the monitor that I use and the app that I'm gonna be showing you guys, um, I will drop that down in the show notes or the description of this video in case you wanna check that out. I also have a discount code if you wanna get a little bit of money off of yours if it's something you wanna try. So I'll jump into first inches lost this week. I lost three inches this week. And again, I think it was just because I was being a bit more mindful about what I put in my mouth. And if you, you know, that could be a reason for you to get a, a monitor here is just to have that extra little like, you know, okay, I'm not gonna eat that. And it was Christmas week, so I was definitely tempted. We had a Christmas party at my mom's house on Monday and on Tuesday was Christmas Eve. I had to teach a yoga class where we had a bunch of cookies and stuff after the class. And then Wednesday was Christmas. There were desserts and things galore everywhere I went. So I was absolutely tempted all week. And I think having this monitor helped. And also I made the commitment to stay 100% carnivore um, up until January 1st by doing the 75 hard challenge with Nutrition with Judy. So. All that played into me just saying, nope, I'm gonna stick to my meat and water only diet and I felt really good doing it. So staying carnivore during the holidays, definitely not easy. You have to deal with your emotions and you have a lot of stress triggers and your body remembers kind of gorging yourself so you're fighting all of that. Um, but I made it through. <laughs> Lots of meditation, continuous glucose monitor and then surrounding myself with positive energy. I was able to make it through the week. Speaking of, because I'm kind of, I do a little bit better eating higher volume, so high protein, um, not low fat. I would say it's probably, you know, 70, 30, 65, 35, you know, protein fat ratios. I did eat probably closer to 200 grams of protein, 150 to 200 grams of protein per day. So when you eat that high protein amount, your level of ketosis is gonna be a bit lower unless you're doing a ton of fasting, which I really don't do anything other than what comes naturally to me. So I guess I would, you could technically say I intermittent fast and stick in about an eight hour eating window, but I don't force fasting, I don't do long fasting. So your level of ketosis is gonna be a little bit lower if you're doing a high protein ratio. So I was real curious to see how that looked on the CGM monitor. So essentially, I'll show you guys the app. 
Um, you have the monitor on your arm and then it is constantly hooking up via Bluetooth to your phone and putting that data in. You can record everything from eating times to when you drink something, all of that. And it's interesting to see how those numbers look throughout the day. Um, every morning when I woke up, my numbers were in the high 90s, 90. And I found that when I was testing my finger with the Keto Mojo over the summer, um, that was pretty, pretty on point with a high protein day. When I did a higher fat day, those numbers were a bit lower. I'm gonna attempt to do a high fat week this week. Um, so far, that hasn't worked out so well. I will tell you guys more about that in a minute. Um, but I think that you know, you're gonna be in a higher level of ketosis with a lower protein, higher fat ratio. So, or a higher level of ketosis with a higher fat, lower protein ratio. So other than my numbers being in the 90s, when I woke up every day, they pretty much dropped, with the exception of one day, to the 70s and 80s for the majority of the day, unless I was exercising or doing cold therapy, which I will talk about next. So pretty flatline. Anytime I would eat a steak, I would actually see my numbers go down a few points, and they didn't rise in a couple hours later. They pretty much stayed in the 70s and 80s range anytime I would eat a steak. Chicken, uh, most of the time, same thing, except for one night I did have a ton of chicken wings, probably a little too many. Um, I saw my numbers go up about 20 points after those chicken wings. So, you know, protein, the gluconeogenesis, it's a real thing, but I don't think it's as, you know, severe, if that's the right word, as a lot of people make it out to be because my numbers really never went above the 90s eating a very, very high protein meal. So effects of cold showers. I did a five minute long cold shower every morning. I am playing around with cold therapy. I do plan on doing a video in the future all about cold therapy. Um, but every time I took a cold shower, my numbers would go down about five points. Um, cold therapy using my cold vest. So I'll put a little picture of my cold vest up here. I love this thing. It absolutely speeds up your metabolism. I think it has helped to spot reduce my waste and um, it helps produce brown fat. I'll put a link in that below in the description. But wearing that cold vest for an hour dropped my numbers about 15 points. Um, so yeah, it does have an effect on your body to do that cold therapy in that kind of a fashion. Walking outside after a meal would drop my numbers about 10 points. And again, my numbers didn't go up after meals. Mostly they just would go down a couple points or stay right at the same place. But a walk outside would drop the numbers by about 10 points. Zone two cardio would drop it at 10 or 12 points. So doing like the elliptical, getting your heart rate in a specific zone. Um, again, 10 or 12 point drop. I did do a couple of weight training sessions. They're not super, super high intensity weight training. So numbers didn't move a ton until the very end of my workout where I kind of did some kettlebell uh, repetition. So I do a minute of kettlebells and then some planks and then a minute of kettlebells and some planks so you can see like a little tiny spike when I was doing that. So my body was producing more glucose to get me through the kettlebell swings, but then it dropped after that workout. Meditation, so I meditate every day, twice a day. <laughs> I know, but it helps me tremendously. Um, meditation didn't really do anything to those numbers. I was thinking that it would drop it, but it actually did pretty much nothing to my numbers. Again, every day I woke up with my numbers probably in the 90s, high 90s, um, when I would have a little bit of black coffee, every single time my numbers would go down. So I didn't put anything in my coffee, but my numbers did go down with the black coffee. So effects of stress and then just kind of not feeling well on my numbers. So Christmas Eve, I'll show those numbers, was a little bit of a stressful day for me. I was in between like a lot of family events. I had to teach a class that morning I was nervous about because it's a special event. Um, so my numbers were kind of all over the place and a little bit higher on Christmas Eve day. But then Christmas day was kind of more of a low stress day. You can see everything just dropped back to more of that normal range. Now I did a high fat day on Saturday. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing the high fat. I made a mistake <laughs> and I drank the broth. So I had some beef short ribs and I drank the broth that the beef short ribs were cooked in without skimming out the fat. So it was very, very fattening um, bone broth or short rib broth. And my body, when I have super, super high fat, like I just can't 
drink fat. <laughs> like I could drink a butter coffee, I could drink MCT oil, but that amount of fat was too much for me. I felt okay afterwards, but then I got really nauseous all night. And this has happened to me before when I've pushed my fat a little too high, I just get really nauseous. Um, so I woke up yesterday on Sunday and my numbers were really high. And usually they drop off after that first cup of coffee, but this time they did not drop off until about one o'clock. I wasn't hungry, I was still nauseous, didn't feel well. I had a cup of coffee and some bacon around one o'clock and the numbers finally went back into the normal range. As soon as those numbers went down, the nausea went away. And it could have been the placebo effect, I don't really know, but I do think that there was a correlation. Again, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a nutritionist or an expert or a doctor, any of that. So I'm basically just telling you guys my experience on this. I don't know a ton, a ton, a ton of science about all this stuff, but I do know enough to kind of just want to monitor my own health. So that's why I did this. And again, next week I'm gonna try to experiment like starting today, today's Monday, with a higher fat day. I'll let you know how it goes. My stomach feels better today, I don't feel as nauseous. I did end up, did end up doing more of a high protein day yesterday just because I was kind of fighting that nausea and I really didn't wanna to try to push the fat yesterday, but today's Monday, I feel a lot better, so I will try to do a higher fat day. I'm also thinking about, just for the sake of science, of having like a diet soda or something artificially sweetened, just to see what that does to my numbers. Now, I'm gonna be kind of tempting the bear to do that, so comment below, let me know what you think. Um, you know, it's something I might try this week just to see what those numbers do. But just with any sweeteners, if you're still having sugar cravings on carnivore, that's probably why if you're having sweeteners. So I typically stay away from those sweeteners and they can be very addictive for me. So if I do this, I'm going to have to be super accountable of like, hey, I'm having a diet soda today, but tomorrow I'm not getting one and the next day and the next day. Um, so I have to be very careful with that. But that is really what I have. I am totally open to feedback. What else would you guys like to know? I'll be doing another update video next week on Monday to tell you how this glucose experiment is going, how my carnivore experiment is going. I'm still eating just meat. I'm not eating any eggs. I'm not eating any butter. I'm thinking about going all beef for World Carnivore Month and possibly dropping coffee. That's been a hot topic. Oh Lord, some hot topics on this page coffee and dairy good lord if you want to bring out the people talk about coffee and talk about dairy <laughs> two very highly addictive substances by the way <laughs> so anyway i think that's it today i'm kind of starting to ramble at this point but i try to do a weekly update on this page this is my weekly update i was going to post friday but i didn't like the video i recorded on friday so that's what it is today Feel free to interact with me in the comments. I'm also on Instagram. That's kind of where I hang out a bit more, but I hope this was helpful. And again, please feel free to comment, leave feedback below, subscribe and share this video. Have a really awesome day.